today on the CTV News at 5. Freezing rain makes for some treacherous driving conditions in southern Alberta. Plus, Alberta's first heart transplant patient encourages organ donation on the 16th anniversary of his surgery. And the Canes train keeps on rolling with another win at the NMAX. CTV News with Jackie Scandlebury. Good afternoon. Two people have died in a rollover due to icy roads. It's one of dozens of crashes in southern Alberta caused by the wintry weather. Around 9.30 this morning, Brooks emergency crews responded to a rollover just south of Highway 542 on Highway 36. A southbound passenger van lost control on the icy bridge and then rolled several times down a steep ditch. Both people in the vehicle died from their injuries. Their names aren't being released at this time. Near Lethbridge, treacherous roads kept emergency crews, police and tow trucks busy all day long. Alicia Fieldberg reports. Vehicles littered the ditches along Highway 3 east and west of the city as a storm rolled in this morning. Freezing rain made driving treacherous, especially on bridge decks. Most of the highways that, that I've been on this morning it's uh, basically black ice, so it's not clearly visible, but it's extremely slippery. It's been a busy morning. Emergency crews responded to dozens of injury crashes and rollovers caused by the weather. They needed the jaws of life to rescue at least two of the drivers. We had one this morning on the jail road where a young female uh, slid off the road and hit a power pole right with the driver's door. She su uh, sustained some uh, serious uh, hip and uh, leg injuries. Traffic tie-ups and winter driving conditions slowed the go for commuters and kept police busy all day. Trying to get the vehicles off the road as quickly as possible so that we can get traffic, or all lanes being used again. To give you an idea of how busy it is, this tow truck company has had all 25 of its trucks out since 5.30 this morning dealing with collisions like this one. These new cars are too good for these roads. The old cars, you could feel when the roads were icy. These new ones, you can't tell until you're in trouble and then it's too late. I mean, your, your anti-locking braking system is not going to work when you're sliding sideways across the road, right? The weather is expected to deteriorate as more snow moves into the area, putting another icy layer on top of the already slippery roads. So just slow down. Alicia Fieldberg, CTV News, Lethbridge. City road crews are currently sanding and salting Priority 1 routes. Even so, motorists are being urged to use caution when approaching bridge decks and intersections. The city is reminding drivers to slow down and leave a safe distance from the vehicles in front of you. Edmonton is also getting walloped by old man winter. Dozens of sanding trucks and plows have been working around the clock after the city got pounded with heavy snow that started falling yesterday. Over 30 centimeters fell in some places. The city also called in 81 private graders to help out. And just a week and a half after Hurricane Sandy pounded the U.S. East Coast, a new storm has added to the misery. A nor'easter has brought heavy rain, high winds and snow to parts of New York and New Jersey. This is awful. This is just beyond. It's terrible. It's awful. It's I'm done. At times, it looked like a blizzard. Tens of thousands of people who were in the dark because of Sandy had their power knocked out again. Some coastal communities were evacuated for a second time in a week, and airlines canceled at least 1,300 flights in and out of the New York area. Let's get straight to the forecast with Dory Rossiter. And we are going to be getting the worst of the snow tonight. Yeah, we really are, Jackie. This is just kind of an advanced system that we're having now, and uh, we've got snow coming down fairly fairly strong right now. That'll increase in the overnight hours, another 10 to 20 centimeters expected, another 5 to 10 tomorrow. The system coming out of the United States literally has nowhere to go because there's an Arctic area of high pressure to the north of us, so it's just going to kind of bounce into that and stall over for us. Uh, but it should be clearing away, we're hoping, by Saturday morning. I'll have more details coming up. Thanks, Story. Lethbridge Regional Police have issued an arrest warrant for a 33-year-old man wanted in connection to a robbery. Shortly after 7 o'clock Tuesday night, a man went into a business on the 200 block of 13th Street North, indicated he had a firearm, threatened the clerk, and demanded cash. The man went behind the counter, opened the register himself, and fled with some money. No one was injured. Police are looking for Kenneth Ronald Heidel. If you have information on Heidel's whereabouts, please contact either police or Crime Stoppers. 
Logging protesters were in court today taking legal action against the province over logging in the Castle Special Area. Five of the people involved in last winter's Castle logging protest are behind the lawsuit. They argue the logging license for the area southwest of Pincher Creek is invalid. At issue is what the protesters call the lack of effective consultation and the fact that the area is considered core grizzly bear habitat. The case is being heard at Court of Queen's Bench in Calgary. Crossness Pass family is raising concerns about fire response time after a house in Coleman was recently destroyed by fire. The fire happened just after midnight on October 28th, causing, as you can see, extensive damage to the home. Concerns over response time prompted the municipality to set up a meeting between municipal officials and Tina Delisle, whose mother owns the home. According to a news release provided by the municipality, firefighters were on the scene in under 10 minutes and had the blaze under control in less than an hour. But in a phone interview, from the past, Delisle told CTV News the fire response was totally inadequate. My sister actually um, stood there and watched it. And it was 26 minutes um, when the um, fire department finally arrived. And then it was approximately 15 minutes before there was any water put on the fire. And to you, that's totally inadequate? Oh, totally. It's three blocks from the fire department, from the Coleman Fire Department. Three blocks. Delisle was scheduled to meet with municipal representatives this afternoon to discuss the response and her family's concerns, but she says the meeting was cancelled a few hours before it was scheduled to happen. There's no indication when that meeting will take place. A Lethbridge man is celebrating a remarkable milestone this week. It was November the 9th, 1996, that Bill Glover got a heart transplant. And at the time, Glover was told he could expect to live another five, maybe eight years. But as Terry Vote reports, Glover is now marking the 16th anniversary of his transplant. Bill Glover calls it an amazing journey, one that started after his first heart attack. I was laying in a hospital in Calgary and the doctor came in and gave me a bunch of prescriptions for 30 days and told me to go home and get all my affairs in order. After suffering another heart attack, Glover was moved to the top of Western Canada's list for transplant recipients. Then, after an anguishing 11-month wait, the call finally came on November 8, 1996. The next day, he woke up with a new heart and a new outlook on life. But after the transplant, I suddenly realized that every single day is a gift. And uh, I've kept that perspective pretty tight ever since. Instead of living to work, Glover decided to work to live. And he's now lived to see four grandchildren come into the world. Being in the hospital when they were born and being able to help hold them just minutes after their birth was just profound. And that would certainly have been an, uh, uh, an experience that I would never have uh, never had if it hadn't been for the transplant. 16 years later, Glover still isn't sure who the donor was, but he does know that person who gave him his life back also gave kidneys, a liver, corneas. In all 10 people benefited from what Glover describes as a most generous gift. If that person hadn't said, yes, this is how we're going to deal with the son, daughter's or son's death, um, I probably wouldn't be here because I wouldn't have been able to get that heart that I needed. I've said a couple of times now, I think, that, uh, you know, please don't take your liver or your tissues and organs to heaven. God knows we need them here. Terry Vogt, CTV News, Lethbridge. More than 4,000 Canadians are waiting for an organ transplant to save their lives. Last year, only 1,800 transplants were performed. 195 Canadians died waiting for an organ transplant. The community of McGrath is paying it forward tonight, preparing to hold a community benefit for the family of a local man who died last month at work. 35-year-old David Van Bruggen was working at a Lethbridge tire shop on October 17th when he was pinned against a building by a forklift. He died of his injuries, leaving behind his wife Tanya and four young children. The community of McGrath is holding a jail and bail, kids carnival and silent auction to raise money for the family. This community has always been very focused on uh, helping each other and being there for each other and it's always come together when there's been tragedy or anything and many of us have had different things in our family that have happened and the community has been there so that's what this is all about is trying to help out those who are in need. The jail and bail is already underway. Donations are being accepted on the website Pay It Forward McGrath. The carnival and silent auction get underway 7 p.m. tonight in the McGrath High School. 
and local high school students paused today to pay tribute to the men and women who bravely fought for our freedom during times of war. The sound of the last post rang through the gymnasium halls this morning at Fleetwood Bodden Elementary. Remembrance Day ceremonies like this one were held at a number of elementary, middle and high schools throughout Lethbridge today. As a chance for students and teachers to pay their respects and learn more about the cost of the freedom we all enjoy today. When we teach it to them, um, we teach it in a kid-friendly way so that they really understand the true meaning of why we um, have a Remembrance Day assembly. And um, the kids feel a lot of pride and they feel a lot of love. My favorite part was watching um, the choir sing pieces of candle. Well, it means a lot. It's, it's a time to be really respectful to the fallen soldiers. The 429th Bison Squadron is scheduled to do a flyover of the Lethbridge Cenotaph with their C-17 Globemaster aircraft on Remembrance Day. It wasn't pass or fail for high school students today. It was actually sink or swim. This was the scene at the Max Bell Pool today at the University of Lethbridge. Some 50 teams were given 90 minutes to construct a cardboard boat and float to the other side of the pool. Students ranged in age from grades 7 to 12. The vast majority of captains went down with their ship, but some were successful in their journey. The cardboard boat championships are aimed at teaching students about teamwork, problem solving and leadership. This is one of the most fun events that we do, and kids are fabulous at this event. They are clamoring to register for this event right from the day the school doors open in September. We have teams ready to come in. If this thing doesn't work, whose fault is it? Um, I think it'd be his fault. You're going to take that? Nope. <laughs> and the winning team received a championship trophy made out of, what else? Cardboard. Time now for a look at the day's markets. Thank you.